Mr. Vice Chancellor, I have the honor and a distinct privilege to present to you Dr. Catherine Frise. To say that Catherine Frise is, and I quote, a Canadian educator, activist, researcher, poet, writer, and professor of distinction, whilst all palpably true and would be accolades for enough for any human being, they do not really begin to describe the role model before us. To read the words that Dr. Frise wrote recently brings home the point that she is a remarkable leader, an outstanding advocate for human rights and dignity, and a shining example of the inherent and important value of difference in our increasingly diverse society. Writing about the vexed question of assisted death, Dr. Frise wrote, let us seize this moment in our nation's history to affirm that all states of living are inherently dignified and worthy of our utmost respect. Catherine Frise graduated from Carleton University in 1976 and has spent her life as a passionate, articulate, and above all, effective advocate for accessibility, for granting the same rights and privileges to all human beings, and above all, treasuring and respecting each person for their innate ability to see, observe, and comment on the world around us. For that, we should all be eternally grateful to Catherine. I have no doubt, Mr. Chancellor, that like most students, Catherine would have suffered from moments of self-doubt about whether she would complete her degree. We all wonder at times whether we can complete a task, but for Catherine in the early 70s, there would have been phenomenal barriers. Barriers to access, barriers to acceptability, barriers to equal opportunity. Fast forward to today. Students still suffer those moments of doubt, but we are proud of the fact that we are the most accessible institution possibly in the world. We are proud that our support and mentoring of students from all aspects of life is equitable. And we are proud that after lagging behind for decades as barriers were stripped away, students with disabilities now graduate on par with the general population. This is a huge accomplishment achieved in a relatively short period of time. And I want to emphasize, I'm talking about Carleton students, and actually our students with disabilities beat the general population by 2%, but why quibble? In large measure, this transformation in spirit and in ethos rests on the shoulders of giants, role models like Catherine Frise, who showed that humanity and dignity was greater and more empowering than simply using the frame of physical appearance. Among many significant advocates, Catherine Frise stands out, not simply as a role model for people with disabilities, but as a beacon of human and humane values, an individual that sees and seizes the sense of the importance of human life in every atom, every expression, and every utterance. In the 70s, the only advantage that Carleton had to offer as an institution of learning for someone who experienced physical challenges was the tunnels. Buildings were not accessible. Accessibility was a minimal afterthought in direct response to individual challenge. Pioneers like Catherine changed this perspective, and Carlton responded. Goaded by the eloquent and forceful arguments and living examples of success, we have learned that a truly inclusive society sees difference as a positive force for the quality of humanity. We have learned that the quintessential human spirit is not bound by what we see and do. It is revealed in the quality of thought, understanding, imagination, and compassion of the human mind and that every human being deserves the right to be heard, to be considered, and to be valued. Through her successful career as an academic, as a poet, and as an activist, Catherine Frese has challenged us to see value and dignity in human life. She has driven us to believe in equality and the importance of difference. She has made a profound difference on society in the largest, most fulfilling context. So let me end with her rallying cry. Let us seize this moment in the history of our nation to affirm that all states of living are inherently dignified and worthy of our utmost respect. There is no doubt that Catherine Frise epitomizes the living mantra of Carleton, here for good. For her passion and compassion, for her leadership, for her eloquence and tolerance, and above all, her ability to serve as an inspiration to us all, Mr. Vice Chancellor, on behalf of the Senate of Carleton University, I ask you to bestow upon Dr. Catherine Frise the degree of Doctor of Laws honoris causa. Thank you.
I'm going to come on the other side. I stand in the light. Catherine, I think that says it all. <laughs> Did you ever imagine when you started here at Carlton that you would end up being such an incredible role model for us all? That your writings would have such deep and profound influence and that your spirit is one that moves people as it just did? On behalf of the Senate of Carlton University and with the authority of the Board of Governors, I admit you to the degree of Doctor of Laws Honoris Causa. Congratulations. Dr. Catherine Frizet will now give the convocation address. the opportunity to be part of this ceremony here on the traditional and unceded territory of the Algonquin Nation, here in this gathering of First Peoples and settlers in the spirit of respect and reconciliation. It's quite the moment. And right here, 42 long years ago, I was part of the very same procession that you will make today with the class of 1976, I and my fellow Carleton graduates set forth in the world ready to take our place in the march of history. We stepped out with high spirits and great expectations. So it's now four decades later, and the first thing I have to say is I'm afraid I'm sorry. We've made rather a mess of things, my generation of freewheelers. And we haven't done everything wrong. We have made, with the leadership of this great university, we've made some great breakthroughs in the advancement of accessible and inclusive higher education. And we have our lesser achievements. As one commentator put it, we have the distinction of having brought to market 35 different kinds of mustard, which you can pay for 
in at least seven different ways. But for the most part, a lot of our legacy is not so benign. To put it mildly, we have not all behaved as good settlers. And on our watch, we have witnessed, I'm afraid, the desecration of a beautiful land. We have scrambled to possess what was never ours to own. The waters, the life that roams wild on land and sea. The earth to its very core and the air itself. We have seeded inequality and we have watched it grow. We have turned upon each other, sometimes in bitter tribal rancor. Most unforgivable of all, too many from my generation of graduates have claimed generous entitlements for ourselves, yet remain by degree indifferent, wary, or begrudging of others who long for nothing more than to live good lives beside us. We have a sip of water. So, the truth is, I have too little to crow about from the cohort of the boomer. The best, perhaps, that can be said is that we knew not the gravity of the danger. Too slowly it dawned on us that the heady excitement of unfettered individualism was running amok, taking up all of the oxygen from our project of a just society. We meant well, and I take heart, at least, that we have left the door open a crack for you to do much better. There's still hope in this country. And so with my generation's failings acknowledged, let me venture to say, as one graduate to others, what I wish someone had urged me to do 42 years ago, and what you may wish to consider doing if you yearn as strongly as I do for a fairer, kinder future world. It's simple advice, really. Plant a tree. Today, give over to the celebratory spirit of the occasion. Bring fitting closure to the adventure that you have completed here at this great university. Let the champagne pop, let the fireworks soar, let your loved ones gush with pride and affection, and let your teachers bask in the satisfaction of jobs well done. Crank up the volume and for the cycle of one full day, allow yourselves to be the center of attention, even as you hold tight to the memory of absent comrades. But tomorrow, plant a tree, or at least begin the enterprise. Choose the tree that you will plant, the soil in which you will ground it. Commit yourselves to careful stewardship 
to nourish and protect something outside of yourself, something that may and hopefully will grow taller and live longer than even you. Do this literally, if you wish, or make it your metaphor, or both. But plant a tree of service to the greater good. It doesn't need to be a grand project. Now, grand is great, so don't hold back. But if your ambitions are more modest in scale, that's great also. Begin from a simple inventory of your gifts, and then consider where your gifts best align with the needs of a hungry and troubled world. Choose your site and dig in. Now, I know you'll have other projects on the go, a few careers, research and further learning, travel and family, and the business of building a life. But I promise you, in the blink of an eye, decades will pass. So get that tree into the ground and keep it fed and watered. In this enterprise, fellow graduates, prepare to have your heart broken. Much harm may come to the young sapling. Frost and wind and drought and blight and fire and blades of human wielding will bring no end of heartache. But keep planting. Prepare to have your confidence tested. Is it the right tree? Was it the right soil? Am I the right stuff for the growing of trees? Yeah, you're the right stuff. So press on. Fame and riches won't flow from the simple planting of trees. But there will be other rewards. Expect to fall into very fine company. Expect to learn from other planters of trees. And expect to work alongside with other planters whom you cherish and admire. Whether your tree takes root in an orchard or the local arena, in a courtyard or a courtroom, expect your tree to change the world for the better, even just a bit. So graduates, have fun today and go on to flourish. Know that for you to flourish and for those whom you love to flourish, that others, others who do not look or act in any way like yourself, others who do not share your values, your social identity, even your species. Others who do not yet even walk this earth. For you to flourish, all of these others must also flourish. So as you begin this project, as you plant this tree, let the trees that you plant tomorrow bear fruit to nourish many. Yield flowers 
to open the heart of the world and give freely of their strength when storms propel us to shelter. Good luck, class of 2018. Trust me, we're counting on you. Thank you.